Um, sorry, a thing just popped up and I had to click it. Uh, um, well, hello, this is uh, the virtual artist talk for our um, group show, uh, Inflorescence. Um, we have uh, the four of us, me, Max Kappas, Rachel Boss, CJ Shaw, who kind of organized the show as well as some other artists here. Uh, I believe Jeffrey Michael Austin. Uh, Jan Simmons is here. Um, hopefully Emily Yamaguchi will be joining us. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd just go through the four of us initially and kind of talk about the idea behind the show, what the word inflorescence means, um, and uh, kind of talk about our ideas and bringing together these artists. Since it, it is a very large show, it's 14 artists. Um, so kind of talking about like the thought behind it and why um, we thought it, would, it was a necessary show to do. Uh, and then after that, we were gonna go into everyone's work and let everyone who's here kind of talk about, um, introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their piece. Um, yeah, so why don't we just jump into it? So um, there we go. So this is the word, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how many people have ever heard this word before. I hadn't heard this word before, um, before we wrote the proposal, but it's this interesting, cool sounding word that has to do with biology that is, talks about like the um, clustering of flowers. Um, and this is whatever the, uh, some dictionary definition of it. Um, I think it's really cool because it's kind of a, it kind, the word itself kind of uh, uh, represents what the work is like, where it's this one word that refers to like a cluster of things and ideas. But then if you look at the word itself, it's like, it kind of sounds like info and like information or like fluorescent. So there's all this stuff kind of implied in it that I think is really cool. Um, but it's a cool sounding word and that's why we chose it. So. Um, the show itself is 14 different artists. We wanted to do kind of a survey of sorts of artists that were working in like very different mediums and with different methods, but we're all kind of circling around the same ways of thinking about appropriating imagery and using digital means to create uh, paintings or drawings or photos or like these, you know, old, uh, I mean, painting is, you know, centuries, millennia old. And uh, we wanted to do a survey of artists that we thought were um, kind of uh, introducing digital means and like the internet into their practice and into the composition and into the uh, process of their work in a way that's really fresh and really new. And uh, we thought kind of all the work kind of, it's attacking it in different ways, but it's all kind of dealing with the same problem in an interesting way. So this is the statement for the for the show. Um, yeah, the clustering of leaves, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, I do, I would like to pass it to one of my three colleagues to talk about maybe the uh, the size of the work or like how we chose the, is there another slide here? No. Yeah, here's, I'll go through. If someone else wants to talk about like, jump in, I can flip through the photos of the installation. Sure. Um, well, like Richard said, the uh, work itself is kind of formally uh, disparate. There are a lot of different styles, um, but I think as Richard mentions, we are interested in artists who are um, layering different, uh, sort of like opposing images um, or creating some kind of tension through combinations uh, within their work. And so the idea was to kind of mimic that in the entire show. And so, you know, like the disparate nature of the work creates a lot of tension just between some of these pieces interacting, which was uh, super exciting for us. CJ, do you want to jump in and say something? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess like, I'm also just thinking about the whole process of kind of like gathering the artists together is really nice. Um, 
a lot of people from Chicago, which is also really nice. A lot of people from LA, New York, um, kind of like all over the place. And I think like bringing um, all these like artists kind of like into one is like a really like nice thing that we got to do. And then um, I think we also tried to keep the size limit was like, I think, would we say 24 by 24? 24 by 24 was the max limit. Was the max. Um, which I think we, was like a good decision. I think it gave a lot of space for like the work to breathe and kind of, yeah, like I think it looks nice. I hope it looks li like nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, heaven is such a large space. Uh, they're like, the it's just it's so big. And we wanted to like, I don't know, we had like a really strict curatorial limit for all the artists. So it's 14 artists, everyone had a single piece and it had to be 24 by 24 as a max. Um, so we wanted to do a very kind of regimented uh, kind of survey of, of everyone's work um, and then kind of give it as much breathing space as possible to kind of uh, mar uh, kind of center the work. Um, yeah, I does, uh, should we jump into uh, artists, you think? What time is it? Ooh, 11 minutes, okay. Uh, Jan, are, you're up first. Do you want to introduce yourself a little and uh, maybe talk about this piece? Yeah, so my name's Jan. Uh, I went to SAIC with uh, the people who organized the show with the exception of CJ. Um, and the piece that I have in the show um, uh, is part of this body of work that I did for about uh, a year and a half, two years, where I was making all of these drawings on legal pad paper, uh, primarily because uh, it just started as like, um, I wanted to work uh, with images and stuff that had to do with uh, life experience uh, in Slovakia. I'm half Slovak and Slovakia is just a really tiny European country. And so uh, for the majority or like half of my time in undergrad, I thought uh, presenting that would be like so minuscule that it wouldn't translate or wouldn't be interesting. But as I kept going, I realized that, oh, if I imbue it with like the attitude of creating something as if I'm with that interest, it will translate. And so I just sort of kept going with that and the paper became like a for me, a representation of like the fact that I saw these things as less uh, important to a viewing audience than they actually are to me. Uh, and then I started playing with these frames uh, as another way to mess with that perception of a uh, of value of like the, the value of uh, the experience or the memory. And uh, with this specific piece, the fish, uh, I've never really gone fishing or caught a fish that was from an image or borrowed a lot of elements from an image of uh, someone fishing in Slovakia. Cause I got to a point where I was pulling from so many memories where I was like, well, if I don't have a memory of my own, I can just create one and find one online and put it uh, as part of it. Um, and the frame has uh, elements of messing with the perception of value by the fact that it's partially meant to look like it's been dredged out of a river, but it also has moments that are ridiculously highlighted to like an exaggerated extent. And it has these fake pins made out of plaster that are painted on that are like bands and stuff that I listened to as a teenager and sometimes today. Um, so I think that that covers the piece. Yeah, I was gonna, I have a question about the frame because it's so wild to see it in real life because it's like, it is like this legal pad and it's, is it pencil? Is that right? Graphite? Uh, the frame or- Oh, or no, the, uh, the, the drawing, the medium. Yeah, the yeah. drawing is just- um, It's like these really kind of like disposable things, but then this like beautiful ornate uh, uh, frame is just amazing the way it connects in with the, uh, the content of the drawing is super cool. Could you maybe tell us about how you made the frame, like what the process was with like the materials? Thank you, sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I, for a while I made stuff out of plywood uh, early in my undergrad where I would like shape plywood and paint on it. So I had a bunch of plywood left over 
Um, and I, I just started realizing that the drawings themselves, uh, before I made frames for them, just felt kind of empty. Like I just felt like I had pushed uh, as far as I could within just a legal pad because it's a fairly ubiquitous material. And if I have enough of, a, uh, of an interesting subset of imagery to pull from that like I should use that to my advantage even if I'm not going to use that on the actual paper uh, so I I used to look at a lot of like reliquaries like religious lyric reliquaries of like 16th century medieval European stuff because that's a lot of what are in museums in Slovakia and there's a lot of old castles so I started pulling from specifically like 16th and 17th century uh, jewelry and uh, religious uh, idolatry and um, just sort of put together my idea of this like organic breathing design that isn't quite ancient that isn't quite medieval and, and sort of blurs the the line of, of what time but still conveys that that sort of like uh, that like regal importance to in like a in an unpretentious way in the way that it's rendered because it's rendered a lot more humbly than if it were pure gold paint or some sort of like exalted uh, steel. And it's also, you're also using like personal, like the, the buttons you said, those are like you collected those, right? Yeah, so I was, uh, I made some alginate molds of uh, pins and I cast them with plaster and then attached them onto the frame with more plaster and like other adhesives and then painted them to look like a, the one on the left is like a facsimile of a DFA records pin. They're going through some drama right now. <laughs> if you want to read up on that, it's kind of funny. Uh, not that funny, but then the top pin is uh, like a facsimile of the cure. The one on the right, I wanted to do a Paramore pin, but I couldn't find a good logo I liked. So I just made one up. Um, and then there's like a fake gemstone. So, so uh, like all of these things are, um, uh, I guess like a combination of like where I see the value in uh, my experiences versus how I perceive how other people might look at my experiences and judge them in a way. Thank you. I think we'll uh, maybe go to the next one and then maybe circle back later if we have time for additional questions, but um, is Emily here? No. Who's supposed to read? Um, is that me? Yeah, okay. So for the artists who aren't here, we have, uh, we've decided to read their um, uh, bios and show their work. So everyone kind of gets, so no one's like uh, excluded from the, the talk, even if they can't happen to make it. So if Emily does pop up, we can uh, uh, get her thoughts on this. But for now, I will just read her um, bio and we can look at her wonderful drawing. All right, here we go. Emily Yamaguchi lives and works in Los Angeles. She received a BA in fine art and anthropology from the University of California, Los Angeles. Her practice excavates imaginaries and nostalgia in search of what other worlds are possible. Beautiful, all right. All right, Jeffrey, are you ready? <laughs> Jeffrey, are you here? Jeffrey. Jeffrey Michael Austin. Maybe we'll come back to... Uh... Rachel, do you wanna do you want to go uh, next, and then we can, when Jeffrey comes back, we can. Oh, there you. Hey, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get. I had to get my door. Sorry. Oh, about no that. worries. Um, yeah, that's me. That's me on the screen now. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Jeffrey. I don't think I've um, met most of you, so hello. Um, you want me to just speak a bit? Yeah, maybe, you know, a, a brief in, uh, introduction and then talk about, you know, the piece and what you were thinking about when you made it and I don't know. Yeah, I'm Jeffrey. Um, 
I've been based in Chicago uh, primarily most of my adult life. Um, sculpture and installation artists in the visual world for the most part. Um, I had a show, I had a show at Heaven a couple years ago. Um, so it was cool to return to that space. Um, I'm also a musician, a kind of like composer and producer in the city with a, with a few different projects that y'all could check out. Um, and yeah, this piece, you know, this piece is kind of really, uh, it's like a mix of territories I've gone into before, but kind of like um, uh, brought together into this amalgamation in a way that I think is really kind of a first of its kind um, for my practice. These kinds of materials coming together and also these kinds of like skill sets coming together for me of, of woodworking and um, photo application and these kind of illusory mirrors that I've been working with for a few years. And I think this piece came out of the call that the show um, itself was kind of curatorially um, describing this notion of like our relationship to the internet and how this content, um, how this content relates to our experience of the internet. And I think it brought me to a space of thinking about um, what I know to be my daily interaction with the internet and social media. And I imagine is most of ours, which is just like largely receiving um, more information about crises and catastrophes that are unfolding in our world on a daily basis um, that we just get more and more of on, uh, each day. And I think I was interested in trying to produce a piece that kind of um, related to that kind of imagery in the same way. And also this phrase, what else? It's, um, it's something I've been coming back to a lot recently. Almost everything that's in my studio in progress right now involves these words or includes these words in some way. And I feel like it's a phrase that kind of, um, it touches on a number of feelings that I feel like for me are, are characteristic at this time. Um, you know, on one hand, the way in which as we're fed on a daily basis, more and more information about these crises that feel um, sometimes larger than us and out of our control. Um, this feeling of what else, meaning like what else, like what else could I possibly take on? What else could I possibly hear about how this world is 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 collapsing? You know, a kind of feeling of defeat. Um, but then at the same time, you know, on our better days, it can represent a kind of um, like what else is possible? More of an imaginative space, and which I think is the two extremes that I I at least find myself going between pretty regularly, the sense of being deeply disheartened and defeated. Um, and then on my, on my more grounded days, um, you know, feeling really um, interested in and excited to develop visions for a world um, that is better than this one that we've been handed as a generation and which we're watching um, fall apart at the seams. And so, that's all in there. Um, and yeah, you know, the mirror, the illusory mirror, it's something that I just like can't get away from and has been pretty central to my work for the past few years. And I think in the case of a piece like this, I think what I really love about the juxtaposition of the mirror and this kind of imagery, this kind of like difficult imagery to look at is that it creates this experience where you, you know, have the potential to be kind of at once looking at this imagery, looking at this reality, and simultaneously looking at yourself looking at it, um, which I think creates an interesting tension. Oh, absolutely. I think um, the it's like such a powerful piece. I mean, with the image, it, it, it touches on this like global sense of uh, just like crisis. And, and kind of helplessness, but then it's also, it feels deeply uh, introspective with the, mm -hmm. uh, the four fingers doing the condensation on the mirror. Like that's something that you do like when you get out of the shower or something. And so it feels very, yeah, I totally get the sense of like the personal effect of just like seeing all these images constantly day after day after day, waking up, just seeing, you know, 
it's yeah no I'm I really like this piece. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, Rachel, do you want to say something about her piece? Yeah. Um, also, sorry about my camera. Like my computer is like broken, so I haven't had a camera for like the past couple of months. Um, so I'm Rachel. I'm from Salt Lake City originally, but I've been living in Chicago for the past four years. Um, and I just recently received my BFA uh, from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, so for the past two years, pretty much all of my work has had like something to do with patterns. Um, so it initially started with these handkerchiefs um, that I would source from eBay and then it like, uh, it sort of evolved where instead of the pop, the pattern was like the part of the object, it was more like this screen and like this background and this environment. Um, so with this, I like was really playing with um, sourcing my source imagery. Um, so previously I'd like use eBay to source all of like my objects and then like it became um, much more extreme in the sense that I like would only get uh, the images from like from this, I like used a Stonehenge postcard that I found on eBay and a metal jack that I found on eBay. So that I'm like very disconnected in a way from these objects. Um, oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, I mean, the way that the, the jack and the Stonehenge are like literally the same scale, it kind of gives this idea of like, I don't know, this kind of greater world view of like, you know, I mean, Stonehenge is massive. Those rocks are so yeah. big. Uh, sorry, my, my roommate's cat just walked into my room. I tried to like get it out. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> um, um, but what I, what I really like about like this uh, progression in the series was that like, it is like very overtly like uh, referencing like digital imagery, but it's very slow. And I think that like, as an artist, as a young artist today, all of your imagery um, will be like, at least in some capacity, like associated with like, you know, digital imagery and like the quickness of technology. Um, and I think that I've like really embraced it in this piece and like the way that like the illuminations kind of work and like in the possibility of the image. Um, but I think that it like, it's not really trying to, like I'm not trying to like challenge or like make like a hard stance on like digital mediation, but instead I'm trying to present these objects in a very slow way, even though they are very digital. And I think when approaching um, like that issue of like really fast work and like, you know, fast images, I think that like the, like the way that I want to approach it is by making it very slow. So yeah. How long did it take you to, to draw this, this piece? <laughs> um, I don't know. I like work on a lot of different projects at once, but they usually take me like at least like two weeks. Yeah. No, it's it's immaculate, the trompe l'oeil and the yeah, no, really, really cool. Um, okay. CJ. What's up everyone? Hello, how are you guys? Um my name is CJ Shaw. Um I'm originally from Los Angeles, but I've been in Chicago for a couple years now, um, currently at Columbia, trying to get my um, BFA I'm in my senior year. So hopefully that goes well. Um, yeah, so I guess like I kind of wrote down a little statement and I kind of want to read that first. Um, so yeah, um, I guess in my work, I tried to represent um, personal imagery from my childhood as like icons. Um, kind of like a way of like preserving them as such um, like in a way, um, when I think of icons, I think of like the, the act of iconization, um, kind of like thinking of these images of my childhood in that way, because to me, when you're like a little kid and you're looking at these like symbols and this like imagery, they are like that, they're icons to you. Um, and I think for this piece um, specifically, I made this during the pandemic. Um, at the time, like around before the pandemic, I was living in the dorms in Columbia, but they sent us um, back home. So I ended up in LA um, for a year. And while I was there, I was 
um, at least for me, I don't know if anybody else had this feeling, but I was really reflecting on like my environment around me and my childhood um, and kind of just things there. I was doing things that I hadn't done in a minute. Um, one of those things was kind of like going to church, um, which I hadn't gone to church, I think in like maybe 10 years. My family is very religious. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting experience. Um, and when I was a child and I used to go, there was um, this man that would drive in a Rolls Royce. He had a Rolls Royce. And I remember every Sunday morning going to that church and just being like, wow, like that's such a cool car and that's such a cool image. And I just thought it was really interesting that like this, this logo for this car was like this angel and this man was pulling up to kind of like church in this like angelic, really cool car. Um, and yeah, it was just weird. Yeah. And then going back to that church later on and seeing that that man wasn't there, he had passed away. Um, yeah, I just, I think the image kind of just got stuck in my head of um, this Rolls Royce logo, the spirit of ecstasy. Um, yeah. And I also just in church going is kind of like you dress up and you, it's, it seems like a, like a time where people would kind of just dress up and try and look their best. Um, and I thought that was something that was really like interesting. It's just like on a Sunday morning, you'd kind of just wear your best clothes. And um, yeah, I think while I was making this, I was really just thinking about that and kind of like, kind of this like luxurious or like gorgeous lifestyle um, and just reflecting on that and kind of growing up in LA, I think there's, you know, Beverly Hills, there's Hollywood and all these other sites like that. So um, yeah, I think for this, I just being surrounded by that and looking at it, I kind of was just drawn to this image and just decided to kind of like re represent it in a way. So um, yeah, it's kind of like what I was going through um, while making this piece. Yeah, no, I think that idea of taking stuff that's like super um, or like initially um, very kind of general or like mass marketed or, you know, factory produced, but then having it and taking it and viewing it with all these kind of personal things and making it like this relic or an icon um, is something that kind of pervades the whole show. I think everyone's work kind of does that in different in different ways like personal iconography. Awesome. Um, Max Capitus. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Max. Um, and so I think uh, a big line of tension in my work is about uh, sort of exploring the line between personal imagery and more maybe generic or pop imagery. Um, and by pop imagery, I, I mean everything from like images that are heavily associated with art history to logos, um, to, you know, emblems. And one of the reasons I'm interested in doing so is I've noticed I have, um, super personal relationships with imagery that is typically conceived of as generic. Um, and I'm really interested in sort of trying to relay my personal relationship with that imagery. Um, and one of the ways I tend to do so is I um, will take photographs that are um, super diaristic and I'll layer these kind of generic images on over. Um, and so this piece um, is a, a uh, picture of my bathroom curtain and I layered uh, over the Warhol nose job painting and I mirrored the the original images of before and after of uh, these two faces um, that were advertisements for a nose job and that was one of the first Warhol pieces that resonated with me like I have kind of a big nose and I was very self-conscious about it as I, when I was younger. And um, yeah, so that piece kind of stuck out to me and I sort of wanted to remove the after photo and uh, mirror the befores. Um, materially, I'm, like I said, I'm working with collage and then I primarily do pastel and on top um, through different stenciling techniques. Um, and I work a lot in the circular format because um, I found as soon as you 
place an image in a circle, it kind of becomes emblematized. Um, like there's the compositional issue of like, when you place a image in a circle, things want to become centralized compositionally, um, which sort of mimics emblems. Um, and so that was also an interesting, um, like formal exploration for me, um, or problem to try to solve. Um, yeah. I think this piece actually makes a great pairing with uh, Jeffrey's piece with the circular mirror and then the mirroring of the two faces. That's cool. Okay. Oh, good. It's me. Uh, hello, my name is Richard. Uh, I am an artist. Um, I, uh, oh God, hold on. I have notes here. Uh, Okay. Um, I am uh, grew up around here. Uh, I went to school at the School of the Art Institute, graduated in May. Um, I'm, I've been pretty active in the Chicago uh, art scene since uh, high school, um, just like showing at weird alternative galleries. Um, I have been helping run uh, train exhibitions since 2017. And uh, the train biennial uh, opened yesterday, had a big block party celebration in uh, Bronzeville. So that was really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a painting um, that I made. Uh, and the title is Oro Taurus, which is a um, kind of a, a awful joke. Uh, so, so an Ouroboros is the image of like a snake swallowing its own tail. And I've combined it with Taurus, which is the mathematical shape for like a donut. Um, and uh, what I'm interested in is this sort of like insane layering of ideas and images and colors and all of that stuff. Um, I think uh, the way that I research my pieces and come up with all these kind of like, you know, goofy, like conspiracy lines drawn between things is um, by doing a lot of like um, going on like Wikipedia and like clicking links and having like 50 or 60 different tabs open um, and then just like connecting things and having this like wild, like, you know, rambling uh, a pathway to something. Um, and I think that idea of like over overlaying different ideas um, can actually generate a lot of new things. I mean, it's it's like you know, it's an old idea like with surrealism, but I think it, it it's a good way to like generate um, interesting or funny or like absurdist kind of uh, ideas. So in here, it's the overlaying of this symbol of like you know, eternity or whatever the Ouroboros is with like this kind of very grounded, very rooted um, mathematical shape of the Taurus. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I, uh, I'm i interested in like, I've been using a lot of like different ways of appropriating imagery. So um, using like different types of image transfer and screen printing um, so in here, it's a, it's a combination of all of those. Uh, and then with like this very gloopy kind of painterly uh, 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 brush marks on top of that. Um, and I don't know, I'm interested in like this pixelation here. That's just kind of really cool to me, the way that it's like this pixelated thing. But then if you look closer, like it's not a perfect, it's not pixelated, it's like, this image transfer that has all these natural kind of errors and bumps and parts that are rubbed off. Um, and then the way that that has this internal kind of layering with the, the Photoshop-y stuff in the background and then the image. Um, and then I'm interested in building on top of that at once it's a painting um, with all sorts of like different ways of uh, screen printing or, or painting and all of that. So um, yeah, I, I, I think what I think about a lot is how audiences uh, deal with like a super dense piece like this um, and how um, ways to, to help viewers kind of like 
unpack things and like pull the strings out and kind of unravel the ideas I've been working with. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff kind of jammed in here, like um, aside from like the Ouroboros Taurus, uh, there's all this, um, I don't know, like the idea there, I was like thinking about like knots in topology, like it's like a, a math thing. And so there's like screen printed um, stuff of that and like all these photos. And I don't know, I was thinking about like sea serpents and legends of that and like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff kind of jammed in um, that, uh, that I, I kind of am interested in um, like allowing uh the audience to like kind of do that wikipedia tab thing in their head i think that kind of moment is really really cool so i don't know rambling um oh yes so now we have um uh artists who were not able to make it but we want to give them their uh uh screen time, I guess, uh, for this talk. So we asked people to send us statements they'd like us to read. So Audrey has sent us uh, a statement about this painting. Um, so I'm gonna read uh, her bio and then the short statement that she sent us. Um, let's see here. Audrey Lachey is a painter, tattoo artist, and art teacher based in Los Angeles. She mostly works with oil paint, exploring promises and aspirations within Western religion and space-time travel. Lachey graduated from UCLA with a BA in fine art in 2019. And then the same, I think about this Carl Sagan quote often, quote, for myself, I like a universe that includes much that is unknown and at the same time, much that is knowable. A universe in which everything is known would be static and dull, as boring as the heaven of some weak-minded theology theologians, the, oh God. Uh, a universe that is unknowable is no fit place for a thinking being. The ideal universe for us is one very much like the universe we inhabit. And I would guess that this is not really much of a coincidence, end quote. Uh, my paintings are about hopes and promises, promises that a breakup doesn't mean the end of love, promises to save the world and promises to stay at home because heaven looks like earth. Beautiful. Um, and then we have Annabelle Dunstan. Uh, Annabelle Dunstan is a comic artist working in Chicago. Short and sweet. Uh, this is actually, so this piece is cool. It has um, drawings on the sides, which uh, pencil drawings. So you should visit the gallery and see the, there's additional things on the sides. Um, Alrighty, uh, CJ, do you wanna read Kaylee's? Yeah, um, let me see, okay. I think Kaylee is here, perhaps? Um, Kaylee has requested that we, we read her bio. I thought I saw them come in, no worries. Okay, um, yeah. Kaylee Buck, born 1998, is a largely figurative painter engaging with the retro. A kitschy maximalist, her work attempts to bridge the gap between art and design, each piece being a pastiche of various appropriated design elements that explores the hierarchy of composition and message, as well as the misunderstanding of language. She recently completed her BFA at the School of Art Institute, Chicago. Um, yeah, so that was... Um, Kaylee's statement. Awesome, awesome. And then you wanna do Gala? Yeah. Um, Gala Prudent is an interdisciplinary artist from Brooklyn, New York. She uses photography, installation and performance to investigate the frequency of black life as it might exist in black time. An experience of time forever linked to his subject, subjectivity, notions of object, object sorry, I couldn't, I can't talk, sorry. Objecthood and unresolvable hope and eternal resilience, so, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, who's doing Cassidy? Oh, that's me. Oh, cool. 
Uh, Cassidy Early, born 1994 in Worcester, Massachusetts, is a non-binary Scottish American painter in Chicago, Illinois. They graduated from SAIC with an MFA in painting in 2020 and received their BFA from Boston University's College of Fine Arts in 2016. Early has exhibited in group and online exhibitions with the Loma Projects in Pasadena, California, Green Gallery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Salon at the Wing Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, and with I Like Your Work podcast. Their work has been published with Harper's Magazine, as well as the Level 3 Artist of the Week. Cool, and Taylor's now. Uh, Taylor Augustine, born 1998 in Northeast Ohio, is deeply committed to observing. Her work expands from a deep appreciation of decorative, decorative arts through practices of drawing, painting, and floristry. And I'll uh, let Max. Oh, yes. Our final, not uh, last but not least. So Sandra Uvali is an artist and writer with a BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, she is currently based in Urbana, Illinois, and collects books. A perfect end. Who doesn't like buttons? Um, so that's all we had planned. That's the end of the slideshow. Um, well, I'm not sure. Um, did Emily send? Did Emily send us a statement? Because I think um, did we just skip, like fully skip Emily. Or well, I think we were gonna give Emily time to come in, uh, um, and then we we're gonna go back and. Okay, who's supposed to read? Didn't I read Emily? Is Emily here? Um, we read. Emily's. I don't think so. We did read Emily. Oh, we did read Emily's. Yeah. Oh, okay, then we're good. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, that's all we had. Uh, let's go to a cool, uh, there we go, inflorescence. Yeah, I don't know um, how many, we have about 14 minutes if anyone has questions. Otherwise, I think we can just uh, uh, end. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, it's so cool. It's really interesting to see the range of works and how everyone interprets this really central um, curatorial narrative that you've built. I definitely see it now that we went through all of it. It's really, really cool to see how it's interpreted. Um, I'm definitely interested in how you four came together as organizers and how you know each other and how the process has been putting together such a large show with so many people. Yeah, um, well, we're, uh, I don't know. Um, the four of us are are are, are friends. We we met in uh, at at SCIC. Uh, CJ goes to Columbia, um, and uh, I don't know. We were uh, in the uh, Max and Rachel and I at least were in uh, uh, the advanced painting program um, at SCIC with a number of other people who are also in the show. Um, who else was in advanced painting? Uh, Kaylee. Uh, Sandra, Taylor, uh, Max, Jan, Rachel, and me. So that's what, seven? Um, so yeah, half the show came from um, Advanced Painting Studios at SCIC. And we just kind of noticed a, a lot of similar uh, wrestling going on with like digital means because it's like such a, I don't know, it's such like a second nature thing to, to kind of introduce digital like processes into painting. Um, and I, everyone was just kind of dealing with it differently. Um, so uh, it, it came from that. Um, and then we, uh, the four of us kind of individually knew other artists and were fans of other artists that we thought were working in similar ways and dealing with similar problems. Um, and we reached out to them um, uh, individually and invited them to the show. I don't know, it's just it's one of the other, some of the other three want to, say something um yeah i can i can say some other stuff um yeah i mean i i think something that i really liked about the show is that like it seemed like there were like a lot of like relationships in terms of like a lot of like we all knew each other one way or another sort of which i think was really nice um like there were people like emily and audrey like knew us and they're from la or like there's gala from new york um, and we all kind of just 
met. And I think like it was past, it was like in 2017, 2018 that we were all kind of like meeting, but it's also nice to kind of bring everyone together. Um, now, just kind of having like people you've met like kind of recently to people you've met in the past and kind of all come together to make like this show, which I think is um, really nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought the process was really, really interesting. I thought it was just really sweet to kind of have like all the people, you know, in just one place and kind of just like show their work, you know? Yeah, the opening was such a sweet moment. It was just like, I don't know, it felt like such a, such a reunion, like of, of like old friends and new friends and everyone kind of just being there. It was, it was, it was lovely. Yeah, I remember when we were installing after we had all the work up, it was kind of surreal, um, like realizing how much of the work we were so familiar with. And um, to second CJ's point, it did feel like really special to have the chance to do that, um, to have everybody together in like these two rooms was really exciting. Yeah. Definitely, it's, I feel that connection um, between you four. It's been super cool seeing how well you work together. Um, Richard, you had a really interesting point earlier about your piece, thinking about like the links and the tabs that are open. Yeah. I do that as well. I definitely get lost <laughs> in some sort of spiral. So I relate to that a lot. And I really see that in your work. And I think that's a really interesting, you know, now that we've talked about it, seeing kind of the connection between everyone's pieces adjacent to each other and how that kind of- Totally, like, totally. Like between, sorry to cut you off, but between okay. uh, these two, there's like the ring and they're right next to each other. So there's like similar stuff there. But sorry, continue. I mean. And there's such dramatic differences between people's styles, but like the relationship kind of leads you through the work and everything adjacent is related to what's next to it. Like I really see Emily and then um, I think it's Audrey, the smallest one here next to it. I think that this little corner has like a really great conversation with the scale and just like the way that there's like this drawing and collage and you go into the other room and then um, Gala's next to Sendra's, there's like this figure and like this woman kind of like female imagery there. So there's definitely this like link information related to each other, open tabs kind of feel to the show, which. <laughs> that's a that's an alternate title. That could be yeah. <laughs> tabs, that's cool. <laughs> I have many tabs open in my computer. <laughs> so that's, yeah, it really works well together. And I think that connection, you can really feel it in the space, especially because you have two rooms, so. Thank you so much. It's very sweet. Definitely. Well, if anyone has any other questions, um, they can ask them now, or I think we're reaching close to having to open the gallery, which is really okay. exciting. Well, uh, if anyone has any questions, oh, oh, we didn't, you know what we should have done is we should have done like a list of everyone's Instagrams, but we didn't do that. Um, I'm sure that's listed somewhere. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're in the space, but we um, can also, share that in our next newsletter. Yeah. That's so nice. It's crazy, everyone's all over the place. So getting connected on social media is definitely important. For sure, for sure. Awesome, well, this has been so enlightening. Um, really appreciate the time. We're really grateful to have everyone's work here. For anyone in the call who is based in Chicago who hasn't gotten a chance to see it, we're open every weekend, Friday, Saturday, one to six, and then Sunday, one to five. Um, definitely something that should be seen in person, so. Really exciting. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Hopefully see all of you soon in person. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Richard. Bye, Max. Bye. Bye. Everyone else, thank you so much. Have a great day.